And God said to Moshe, close your eyes. And he closed his eyes. Fold your arms across your chest. And he folded his arms across his chest. Straighten out your feet. And he straightened out his feet, his legs. And then God called to the neshama within Moshe's goof, within Moshe's body. And he said, Biti, my daughter, a hundred. It's true of every tzaddik that the, the moment when a tzaddik passes away, there's this whole drama that takes place around that, around that moment. The Medrash basically explains verses of the Torah. So the last verse, the, the, the verse that introduces Moshe's death says, V'zeis ha-bracha, and this is the blessing, Asha Beirach Moshe, which Moshe blessed, Isho Likim, Moshe, the man of God, as B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel. This is the blessing he gave the children of Israel, Lifnei Moshe, before he died. So the Medrash wants to interpret and explain all these words. What does man of God mean? What does it mean, and this is the blessing? What do you mean, and? Medish explains all that. But also, the Medish wants to explain, that's where we're going to begin. The Medish also wants to explain, what does it mean before he died? Well, of course, before he died. So we know the simple meaning is moments before he died. Not a long time before, but immediately before. But the Medish sees more meaning in it than that. So let's do this. V'zeis ha-bracha, and this is the blessing that Moshe gave. So the Medrash says, what do you mean, and? As if there's something preceding this, and this is like the conclusion or the follow-up. So the Medrash says, V'zeis ha-bracha, will understand it based on another pasuk, another verse in Tehillim. It says, Mi yale bahar Hashem, o mi yokum bimkeim koche. Who can go up to the mountain of God, and who can stand in his holy place? So the rabbi said, Rabbonon amru medaber b'meisha. That that verse in Tehillim is talking about Moshe. Who can go up to the mountain of God? Moshe. How do we know? Because it says, and Moshe went up the mountain. Who can stand in God's holy place? Answer, Moshe. How do we know? Because God said to him, take off your shoes. The place where you stand is holy. So who stands in a holy place? Moshe. Then the Tillam goes on and says, Niki kapayim, one who is clean of hand, ubar levov and pure of heart. So again, the rabbi said, who is clean of hand? Moshe. How do we know? Because Moshe says, in defending himself, he says, they have complaints to me. The people have complaints to me. I never took a single donkey from them, etc., etc. So Moshe's hands were clean. And pure of heart, this is really interesting, pure of heart is Moshe. Where do we see that Moshe was pure of heart? Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak taught, Afilu hedyet, even to a human king, to a human being, if a friend would say what Moshe said to God, it would be considered an insult. And yet Moshe could say it to God and get away with it. What did Moshe say to God? When the Jews made the golden calf, God was very angry and wanted to destroy them. So Moshe comes to plead on their behalf. What does he say? He says, Loma Hashem ba'amecha. He says, Why are you angry? If you come to a person who has a good reason to be angry and you say, Oh, why are you angry? You'd be out of line, even to a human being. But more than that, the Medish tells us, not here, but, but earlier, that when they made the calf and Moshe comes to God and says, Why are you angry? So God said, why am I angry? Forty days ago, 
I said to them, thou shalt make no graven images, and here they go ahead and they make a golden calf and worship it. So Moshe said, well, uh, it's not completely wrong to offer a little bit of gratitude to a cow. I mean, after all, a cow produces milk. So God said, you too, Moshe, you're making the same mistake. Cows don't make milk. I make milk. I make the cow. I make the milk. A cow is nothing. So Moshe said, well, that's what I mean. What are you angry about? They bow to nothing? <laughs> now, Moshe could get away with that because he was absolutely sincere. It wasn't a scheme. And it wasn't like, a, you know, he didn't set God up. He meant it 100% sincerely, which proves that his heart was pure. So who can go up to the mountain of God? Moshe. Who stands in his holy place? Moshe. Clean of hands? Moshe. Pure of heart? Moshe. Asher le nosalashov nafshe, who does not take a soul in vain, that also is Moshe. Because when he killed the Egyptian, it was justly done and not in vain. And also, the verse in Tilim goes on, and the one who never swore falsely, that also refers to Moshe. Because everything Moshe said was true. And therefore... And this is the blessing that Moshe gave, knowing who Moshe is, clean of hands, stands on the mouth of God, so on, so on, so on. Now you can understand, and this is a blessing that he gave, he being all of these wonderful things. Another explanation, and this is the blessing that Moshe gave. So the Medrash gives us the rest of the story. In, uh, in Mishle, it says, Rabbeis Bonneis Asu Chayu, Viat Olis Al Kulana. Many daughters did well, but you transcended them all, surpassed them all. So the Medrash says, Who is this referring to? It's referring to Moshe. How so? Adam says to Moshe, I am greater than you because I was created in God's image. As it says, and God created Adam in his image. So Moshe says, I surpassed you. How? Because you were created in God's image, but you lost it. It was taken away from you. You were created in God's image. You were going to live forever. But then you sinned, and it was taken away from you. So that which God gave you, he took away from you. But what God gave me, I never lost. When Moshe came down off the mountain, his face was shining. And that shine never went away, even to his last day. As it says, um, his eyes did not grow dim, and his uh, spirit did not dry up. He was shining. Another thing, Noach comes to Moshe and says, I'm greater than you. I was saved, spared, in the generation of the flood when everybody else was killed. So Moshe says, I surpassed you. How so? You saved yourself, but you didn't have the ability to save your generation. But I saved not only myself, but my entire generation many twice when God wanted to destroy them. And I was able to save them. To what can we compare this? To two ships that set sail. Each ship has a captain. One captain comes back alive having saved himself, but not his ship. The other comes back with his ship. Who gets the praise? The one who can bring back the ship. So I brought back my ship. You came back by yourself. Actually, Noyach built the ark 
over 120 years, very slowly, in order to give people a chance to repent. They'll see him doing, uh, be, building the ark, and they'll ask him what it's for, and he'll tell them God is angry, and he's going to bring a flood, and they can reconsider and become righteous. And in 120 years, he, could, he didn't convince a single person, except his own family. So Moshe says, you, you didn't save your ship. I saved my ship. <laughs> well, I'm taking everything too literally here. Why are they having this conversation? Yeah, L listen, listen, listen with your heart for a moment. Another thing, Avraham says to Moshe, I am greater than you because I fed people. My tent was open from all four sides, I fed people. Moshe says, yeah, but I surpassed you in that too. You fed people in civilization. I fed people for 40 years in a desert where no one goes. Because Moshe brought the, uh, the, the manna from heaven, came in Moshe's honor. So I was able to feed people in, uh, in a desert. You fed them in, uh, in a town. Yitzchak says to Moshe, I'm greater than you. I stretched out my neck on the altar, and I saw the face of the Shekhinah. So Moshe says, yeah, but I surpassed you. You saw the face of the Shekhinah, and eventually it made you blind. As it says, Yitzchak grew older and his eyes grew dim. But I saw the face of the Shekhinah. I spoke to God face to face, and to the last day of his life, his eyes were bright. Le'kohu enov. Yaakov says to Moshe, I am greater than you, because I wrestled with the angel and I won. So Moshe says, and I surpassed you. You wrestled with an angel on your turf when the angel came down to earth to wrestle with you. I went up to heaven and had to wrestle with the angels because they wouldn't let me take the Torah down to earth. And I beat them. Therefore, Shlomo HaMelech says in, in Mishle, many daughters did great. Adam, Noyach, Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, but you, Moshe, surpass them all. Therefore, God says to Moshe, since you are greater than all the rest, would you bless my children? Vezeis habracha, and this is the blessing that Moshe gave. So you see there's an introduction there. Hmm? The soul. The souls are daughters. Actually, when the soul is in heaven, it's called mothers, bina. When the soul comes down to earth, then it's called daughters, malchus. Then it depends on which. If it's talking about what it did on earth, then again, it's referred to as daughters. What it does in heaven is referred to as mothers. Dovarache, another explanation of Zayis Habracha. Amar Shmuel Bar Nachman. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachman said, Kivin Shabo Moshe Levarachas Yisrael, when Moshe came to bless the, the people, Bo HaTayra V'HaKadosh Baruch Hu Levarachas Yisrael. The Tayra came, and God came to, to offer their blessings as well. V'zeis is the Tayra. The word V'zeis is the bracha that the Tayra gave. Where do we find that the Tayra is referred to as V'zeis? V'zeis ha-teira. V'zeis ha-teira asher... asher so meishof me b'nei so. So we see the word v'zeis refers to the Torah. So v'zeis, Torah gave a blessing. Asher beirach meishe, which meishe blessed, that's Moshe's blessing. Ish olikim, that's God. Because God is called Ish, like... Hashem... So you have a triple blessing. Why three blessings? Because, as it says in Kahilis, uh, a tripled strand 
a strand of three, uh, uh, a rope of three strands is not easily severed. So a triple blessing is a very strong blessing. Another explanation. V'zei sabracha, Omar ab Tanchuma. Rabbi Tanchuma said, what does this mean, ish elikim, man of God? Im elikim, loma ish. Ve'im ish, loma elikim. What is man of God? If he's God, he's not man. If he's man, he's not God. So you have a number of answers. One answer is, when Moshe was floating in a basket, in hiding in the waters, the waters were protecting him, then he was ish. Then he was a man. But when he turned the, the water to blood, when he had the authority over the water, then he was a lukim. Another thing, when he fled from Paroi, then he was a man. But when he uh, drowned his army, Pharaoh's army, in the, uh, in the sea, then he was God. Another thing, when he went up to heaven, then he was a man. Because among angels, <laughs> he stood out as the human. But when he came back down to earth, he was like a god. Compared to the humans on earth, his face shone, they were afraid to, to, to look at him. Or the exact opposite. When he went up to heaven, then he was God. He didn't eat, he didn't drink, he was like God. When he came back down to earth, then he was a man again, he ate and he drank. Another thing, what is man of God? He was half man, half God. In other words, the neshama is God. The body is human. Yeah, except that by most people, the neshama is, is buried. So there's God in him, but he's not acting that way. Whereas with a tzaddik, all his behavior is his neshama. That's his life. And it's all done through a body. So it's godliness, but through a body. A neshama in a body. Now, what does it mean before he died? The, ra the, rab the Rabbanon Amri, the rabbi said, what did Moshe do before he died? In other words, when it came time for him to die, he took the angel of death and threw him away and gave blessings to the tribes, each one according to, their, according to their blessing. In other words, it had come time for him to die and he delayed it. So before he died means by delaying his death, he was able to fit in the blessings. So this is the blessings Moshe gave before he died. He refused to die so that he could give the blessings. So he threw the angel of death away, and he gave the blessings. Amar Ab Meir. Ab Meir says, the angel of death came to Moshe. Now this is, this is the part you really have to listen with your heart. The angel of death came to Moshe, and he said, God sent me to you, because today is the day that you die. So Moshe said, go away. I'm going to praise God. Like it says in Tehillim, Loi omus ki echye, I will not die, I will live. The rest, vasaper maseko, and I will praise God. So that's Moshe talking to the angel of death. I'm not ready to die, I want to praise God. So the angel of death says, Moshe, ma'atom is goe, why are you so arrogant? God has others to praise him. Think he needs you? Who else praises God? Heaven and earth. As it says, Hashemayim Mesaprim Kveit Kale. The heavens speak of God's greatness. So heaven and earth praises him. Praise him. Omale Mesha, so Mesha says to the angel of death, I will silence them and I will praise him. As it says, can you guess? Hazinu hashamayim v'adabeira. Listen, heavens, I will speak. 
So he silenced the heavens and he praised God. The angel of death came back a second time. What did Moshe do? He mentioned God's name, the ineffable name, and the angel fled. As it says, Ki shem Hashem ekra, because I call in the name of God, therefore I do not die. When you pronounce God's name, the angel of death ran away. When the angel of death came back a third time, Moshe said, since this is a decree from God, I have to justify his judgment, God's judgment. As it says, Hatsur tomim po'oloi. Omar Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak said, Hoysa nafshe shal Moshe meskashe lotzeis. Moshe's neshama refused to leave. His soul refused to leave. So Moshe tried to reason with it. Moshe says to the neshama, are you afraid of the angel of death? The neshama said, no, because God wouldn't do that to me. As we say in Tehillim, ki chilatsta nafshi mimovas. You have spared me from death, meaning from the angel of death. So then Moshe says to the neshama, are you afraid that you will go to Gehenna? That you'll have to go to, to hell? The neshama said, no. Because it also says, es ragli midechi, God guides my feet from slipping. So I wouldn't go. So then Moshe says to his neshama, so where are you going? Where are you destined? So the neshama says, es halich lefnei Hashem ba'artzis achayim. I will walk before God in the land of the living. When Moshe heard this, he said to the neshama, so go. Shuvi nafshi limnu Go, my soul, to your rest. Amr Rabovin. Rabovin said, Kivin shen nestalik, when Moshe passed away, hatachtenim hayu mekalsen eisei, the lower worlds praised him and said, teira tziva lanu Moshe. Moshe was great, he brought us the Torah. So earth was saying, Moshe's greatness is that he brought the Torah down to earth. And the higher worlds praised him and said, he brought God's justice to the people. And the people praised, and God praised Moshe and said, there will never be another prophet like, it, like Moshe. Now, why did, God, why did Moshe merit that God should take care of his burial? Because it says that nobody knows where Moshe was buried. So obviously nobody was there. God himself took care of Moshe's burial. Why did Moshe deserve this? So the Medrash says that when it came time for the Jews to leave Egypt, every Jew was busy packing up his gold, his silver, his, his possessions. Moshe was busy running around the city for three days and three nights trying to find where Yosef was buried. Because Yosef had made them promise that when God takes them out of Egypt, they'll take him along. So for three days and three nights, he was running around looking for Moshe's casket. When he was totally exhausted from the search, he met an ancient woman. And she saw that he was tired, so she said to him, Moshe, why are you so exhausted? And he said, three days and three nights, I'm running around looking for Moshe's casket, and I can't find it. So she said, come with me, I will show you. This woman was uh, Serach Bas Osher. And she lived a very long time. I don't know how old she was. Um, and I will show you where he is. She led him to the water, to a certain spot on the, on the, uh, on the beach. And she said that in this spot, the Egyptians made a casket weighing 500 pounds. And they threw it into the water. Because the astrologers told Pharaoh that if he wants to keep the people here forever, all he has to do is hide Yosef's body, and they'll never be able to leave. Because they swore that they wouldn't leave without him. So they put him into this heavy casket, and they threw him to the bottom of the uh, Nile. 
So Moshe stood at the, uh, at the edge of the water, and he said, Yosef, Yosef, you know how you made us promise that when God takes us out, we will take you with us. The time for us to leave has come. Don't make us wait. You have many good deeds to your credit. Ask God to help you and come to the surface. And immediately, the, uh, the casket floated to the surface like a cork, and Moshe took the, the, the casket on his shoulders and carried it all the way to Israel. So God said, you think this was a small thing that you did? I swear to you that just as you took care of Yosef, I will take of his burial, I will take care of your burial. When it came the day for Moshe to pass away from this earth, God came to him and said, your day has come. Hein korvu yamecha. So Moshe says, Master of the universe, after all the effort I put in, you're telling me that my days are up? Lay omus, I don't want to die. Ki echia, I want to live and tell of the greatness of God. So God says, you can't. Ki kol ha'odom. I have decreed that all, that all people must die. So Moshe says, Master of the Universe, I ask you for one thing before I die, and that is I want to go up to the heavens, break open all the gates of all the heavens and all the gates of the, of the depths of the earth, so that all will see that there is no one besides you. So God says to him, you say there is no one besides me, I say there is no one like you. As it says, and there will never be another prophet like Moshe. Hein korva yamecha lamus, Omer ab Evu. Rab Evu taught, that Moshe said to God, Master of the universe, I praised you to the 600,000 people who sanctify your name by, by telling them that you reward people for every good deed. And that which I praised you with, you are now going to punish me and tell me that my days are up. Is this measure for measure? Is this what I deserve? You're telling me I have to die while I devoted my life to you? You're telling me that I can't complete the journey, but I completed my job? You're telling me that you don't have enough when I gave you everything I had? So God says to Moshe, this too is good because when I said to you, Hain karvu yonecha, your day has come, Hain is related to the word hine. Hine anechi sheleach malach. Hain tzadik ba'aret yishulam. And hine anechi sheleach l'chem eselio anavi. And that is that the, the death of a tzadik, your dying, is also for the good. I'll soon see later. And just as you praised me to the 600,000 souls, I will praise you and raise you in the future. In other words, after Mashiach comes, among all of the tzaddikim. In fact, he will be elevated as well, but take chamishim vehei ribuy tzaddikim. 55,000 righteous people Will, will, you will be raised among, above the 55,000 righteous. And that's Hain. Hain is 55. The Torah mentions Moshe's death 10 times because that's how many times God had to decree his death before it actually happened. And each time Moshe prayed that he would go into Israel and didn't take the decree seriously. Because Moshe thought to himself, the Jews sinned many times, grievous sins. And every time I asked God to forgive them, he, I prevailed and God forgave them. So certainly I, who have never sinned, certainly when I ask of God to let me go into Israel, he'll let me go. When God saw that Moshe was not taking the decree seriously, and he's not preparing himself in prayer, he immediately swore that by his holy name, that Moshe would not go into Israel. 
when Moshe saw that the decree had been sealed, then he proclaimed the fast, and he drew a circle in the sand, and he stood in the circle, and he said, I won't budge from here until you nullify that decree. Moshe took at that time sackcloth and covered himself with ash and began to plead with God. And his prayers were so intense that the heavens and earth shook. And all of creation thought that, uh, that it was all over. And a heavenly voice called out and said, no, no, the world is not over. That's just Moshe's prayer uh, shaking the foundations. As, uh, as it says in the, in the vision of Yecheskel, that was the sound of Moshe praying. God proclaimed, declared, in every heaven that all the gates of each heaven and all the courts of each heaven should be sealed and closed and not to accept Moshe's prayer because the decree had already been sealed. The angel who is in charge of announcements his name is Ahazriel, was called before God in haste, and he was told to go down to every gate and lock it because the, the sound, the, the voice of Moshe's prayers were cutting through like a sword. And then the angels in heaven praised God and said, Baruch Kveid Hashem Imkaymei, because they saw that God pl pay, plays no favorites. That even Moshe, when the decree is made, it sticks. At that time, Moshe said to God, Master of the universe, it is known and revealed to you how much I worked and how much I suffered, how much I agonized over the Jewish people until I made them believers in you. How much I suffered and how much I agonized over them until I implanted in them a devotion to mitzvahs. And I assumed that just as I see them in their starting points when they're not yet worthy, I will certainly see them also when they are worthy. And now that they are worthy, you're telling me that I can't go with them? Aren't you contradicting the Torah? Because in the Torah it says that if you hire someone to do a job, you have to pay him the day that he does the job and not wait until tomorrow. So you're telling me that today, meaning in this world, you're not paying me. You'll pay me later. But you're not allowed to do that. You have to pay me now. So God says, you're asking me to contradict my Torah. Because in my Torah it says all men will, will die at 120. Right after the flood, it says, Vahayu Yemeyam, Meyav Esim Shonam. Still time to hmm? Still time to yeah, but not more. That was like the limit. <clears throat> the angel of death, who is the, the head of all the Satans, all the little sa Satanim, was counting the moments until he could take Moshe's Neshama. Not that he was wicked, but that he, uh, it was a great honor for him. At that time, an hour had gone by from the time that Moshe was supposed to die. He had delayed it for an hour. Then, at the end of the hour, Moshe said to God, Master of the universe, if you won't let me go into Israel, at least let me stay in this world outside of Israel. So Moshe says, if you don't die in this world, how will I resurrect you in the world to come? The Baal Shem Tov was given the, the, the choice of either going to heaven with his body or having his body go back to dust and being resurrected. And the Baal Shem Tov chose resurrection. Better to go back to the, to the earth to be buried and resurrected than to never die. 
I don't know why, but there's some virtue to it. So God says to Moshe, if you don't die, how, am I, how will I be able to resurrect you? And not only that, you're, you're asking me to contradict my Torah. So Moshe says, Master of the universe, if I can't go into Israel, can you at least let me live like an animal that eats grass and drinks water but gets a chance to see the world? Let me be like one of them. And God said, enough already. So Moshe said, Master of the universe, if I can't be like an animal in this world, can I be like a bird who flies to the four corners of the earth during the day and gathers its food, and then in the evening it returns to its nest? So Moshe wanted to be in heaven part of the time, but part of the time to be able to come f visit the earth which just shows how precious this world is to, to the righteous. So God said, enough already. What does enough already mean? Enough talk. When Moshe saw that nothing is going to save him and that he has to die, then he said, Hatsur tomim po'olei kichol drachav mishpat kele muna ve'ein ovel tzadik v'yasherhu. God is just in all that he does. Moshe then took a scroll and began to write God's name and the song of Moshe, Hazinu. He hadn't yet finished writing when the moment of his death arrived. God said to the angel Gavriel, bring me the neshama, bring me Moshe's neshama. So the angel says to God, master of the universe, he who is equal to 600,000 other people how can I see him die? How can I do him harm? So God says to the angel Michal, go bring me Moshe's neshama. So the angel Michal says, master of the universe, I was his teacher. He was my student. I can't bear to see him die. So God says to the angel of death, go bring me Moshe's neshama. The angel of death wrapped himself in anger strapped on his sword, clothed himself in cruelty, and went towards Moshe. When he saw Moshe sitting and writing God's name, shining like, uh, like the sun, he said, uh, the angel of death was frightened, and he said, certainly no angel can approach him. And before the angel revealed himself to Moshe, Moshe already knew that he was there. And he said to him, Ein sholim Omar Hashem will show you. No peace to you. What are you doing here? He said, I came to take your neshama. So Moshe said, who sent you? <laughs> who sent you? He said, he who created all creatures sent me. So Moshe says, Ein ata neitel neshmasi. You are not taking my soul. So the angel said, but all souls are in my hands. So Moshe said, all souls may be, but not me. So the angel of death says, and what's so special about you? So Moshe says, Ani ben Amram. I am the son of Amram. I was born circumcised. The day I was born, I spoke and I walked and I conversed with my mother and father. And I prophesied that I will receive the Torah in a flame of fire. And then when I went out to the streets, I walked into the palace of the king and I took the crown off his head. And when I was 80 years old, I performed the uh, wonders and the miracles in Egypt. And I took 600,000 people out from under the noses of the Egyptians. And then I split the sea into 12 parts. I turned the bitter waters to sweet. I went up and made my way through heaven and fought a battle with the angels and received the Torah from God's right hand and spoke to God face to face and revealed to people the secrets of heaven. Then I, carry, I waged war with Sichon and Oig, the giants, who even in the times of the flood the waters only reached their knee. And I stopped the moon and the sun in their orbits. 
and I killed the, the giants with the stick in my hand. Mi yesh beboi oilam sheyochol lasis kein? Who else in this world can do that? All that. Lech rasha mikan. Get away from me. The angel of death fled. And he came back to God. And God said to him, angrily, go bring me Moshe's neshama. So the angel of death drew his sword, and he stood over Moshe with grim anger, or grim evil, whatever. What did Moshe do? Moshe took the stick that had God's name engraved on it, and he beat the angel of death until the angel of death fled. At the end of that moment, a heavenly voice called out and said, Moshe, your time has come. So Moshe says to God, Master of the universe, you remember that day you revealed yourself to me at the burning bush? And you said to me, come, let me send you down to Pharaoh, and you will take my children out of Egypt. You remember the day I stood at Mount Sinai? Forty days and forty nights? I beg of you, don't send me this angel of death. A heavenly voice called out and said, don't worry, fear not. I will take care of you myself. Moshe then began to prepare himself to sanctify himself like the seraphim. And the angels and God came down from the heavens of heavens to take Moshe's neshama. The angels were Michoel, Gavriel, and Zagzagil. Michoel spread out the mattress Gavriel put a pillow under Moshe's head, and Zagzagil put a pillow under Moshe's feet. Michal stood to the right side, Gavriel to the left side, and God said to Moshe, close your eyes, and he closed his eyes, fold your arms across your chest, and he folded his arms across his chest, straighten out your feet, and he straightened out his feet, his legs. And then God called to the neshama within Moshe's goof, within Moshe's body. And he said, Biti, my daughter, 120 years was set aside for you to be in Moshe's body. The, the 120 years are up. It is time for you to come out. Come out and don't delay. So the Neshama said, Master of the universe, I know that you are the God of all souls, and all neshamas are in your hands. Life and death are in your hands. You created me, you formed me, and you placed me in Moshe's body for 120 years. But now, is there a holier place in all the world than Moshe's body? I love him. I don't want to go out. So God says, Neshama Tzi'i, come on out. Do not delay. I will raise you up to the heaven of heavens. I will seat you next to my throne among the Kruvim and the Srofim and the Gedudim, among the highest angels. So the Neshama says to God, Master of the universe, from the heaven of heavens and angels, some angels came down to earth, and they were immediately corrupted until you had to suspend them between heaven and earth. But this son of Amram, in 120 years, has never been corrupted. I beg of you, let me stay here. At that moment, God kissed Moshe and took his neshama through the kiss. <clears throat> God was crying and he said, Who will argue with me in defense of the sinful? Who will stand up against me in defense of, of those who are wicked? The spirit of prophecy cried and said, There will be no more prophecy like the prophecy of Moshe. The heavens cried and said, The chosid 
is gone from the earth. And the earth cried and said, the righteous among people is no more. And when Yoshua came to find his teacher and couldn't find him, he cried and he said, Heishiyah Hashem, help us God, ki gomar chosid. Help us because the chosid is gone. Ki pasu emunim ibnei adam, the believer, the faithful among men is gone. O malachi hashores emim, the angels of heaven say, Tzitkas Hashem osa, he performed God's righteousness, and the Jews said, "U mishpatovim Yisrael, he judged the people. Elu ve'elu hayu emirim, and all of them together said, "May he come in peace, and may he rest in peace. May the memory of the tzaddik be a blessing, and his soul live." L'chayi elam haba. Now, if you reconsider the whole thing, the questions you had before are not so relevant. The Medrash is not saying that there was actually a conversation between Adam and Moshe, and he said, I'm greater than you, and he said, I'm greater than you. The Medrash is trying to describe the difference between Adam and Moshe. If they would have this conversation, this is what it would sound like. In what way is Avraham great? In what way is Moshe greater? But not that they were debating their, their greatness. And even in the conversation between Moshe and God, in, in dying, not dying, all of this doesn't have to be verbalized. This is the reality. When it comes time for a tzaddik to die, everything in, in, in creation, everything in, in the universe is shaken. So God said to the angel, Michal, go bring me his neshama. And Michal said, nah, I, I can't stand to see it. What, what is this? Uh, an angel giving God a hard time? It's not that God told him to do it and the angel refused. It's that had God asked Michal to do it, he couldn't have done it because he's his teacher. Had God asked Gavriel to do it, he couldn't have done it because... So it just shows how, first of all, the soul of a tzaddik is not anxious to go to heaven, wants to stay on earth, because on earth is where God is really available more so than in heaven. And it also shows how hard it is on the universe for a tzaddik to pass away. The heavens, the earth, the angels, everything is, is, is in trauma when, it, when a tzaddik is leaving, departing the earth. But the Medrash puts it in a way that you're that your heart can feel for it, not just in an abstract theological language. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program. There's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us. Take a look. Click uh, the link below and see which which of the three suits you best, and join us for some enjoyable conversation.